In the skincare community, we're often told to look for percentages and that a higher strength means higher, stronger performance, something along those lines anyway. We're often kind of told that say 8% glycolic acid from one brand will be stronger than 4 or 5% glycolic acid from another brand. Or if maybe two different brands are offering the same percentage of glycolic that they will have similar results across the board. But that's just not accurate. It's not an accurate way of judging product performance. It's not an accurate way of judging brands versus each other. 5% glycolic acid from one brand can be vastly different from 5% glycolic acid from another brand. This video will touch on why. In skincare products, it is very normal for an acid to be neutralized to a point. How much acid is neutralized is actually what will affect the performance and the experience of using that product. It's a very normal standard thing for acids to be neutralized. So it's like if you have 5% of an acid, not all 5% of that is directly active in the product on the skin, wherever you're using it. A portion of it will always be inactive. How much acid is neutralized is essentially what creates this differentiation between products and why some products, even at the same percentage, might feel stronger or weaker than others. As an example, Crave Beauty has an acetona called Kalaluya, I think is how you say it. This contains 5.25% of glycolic acid and the pH is listed at between 3 and 4. For the purpose of this example, if we just assume that the measured pH is 3.5, the amount of active acid in the, in the product actually ends up being 3.58%, not the 5.25% that's listed in the product information. An alternative example is the Pixi Glow Tonic, which I believe has 5% glycolic acid in it. Just on various websites, I could sort of see that the general pH is considered to sit between four and five. And again, for the purpose of this example, let's assume the pH measurement came in at 4.5. This would mean that there's 0.88% active acid in this formula, not the 5% that's listed on the product info. So these are two products with very similar glycolic percentages, but because just the pH varies, it means that the actual amount of active or unneutralized acid in the product varies quite a lot. This will totally influence and change the kind of perception and user experience and maybe even the results that you have with these products. Please also note that I haven't actually verified the pH values of these products. It's just what I found doing a quick Google search. I could be wrong. If I am wrong on the pH that I've noted, that would of course influence the percentage numbers that I've just given. So take this as a general example only, not like a gospel claim. Put in another way, if we use these numbers as an example, it could theoretically mean that Crave is like four times more active than Pixie. And of course, something that feels four times stronger on the skin will have an entirely different kind of experience when you're using it. Many of us are already familiar with the concept of pH in skincare and that essentially the lower the pH is, the more acidic a product becomes. However, beyond just pH in itself, there's a concept called a pKa number. This is what informs the kind of optimal pH required for an acid to be at its peak performance. I'll also mention as well that I'm not like a scientist or anything like that, so I'm going over this in a very basic overview, the way that I apply it to skincare understanding and skincare products. There is, a, of course, a lot more nuance involved in this product, a lot of different circumstances that alter things and all that stuff. So do not take what I'm saying as like a black and white concept or black and white principle. It's just the goal of this video is just to kind of break down this theory that just percentage matters because that's not true. At a core level, you need the pKa number to know the relevant pH for a certain acid. The pKa number is different for, from all acids and therefore the optimum pH is different as well. And this kind of like relationship is what influences the amount of free acid that's available in a product. Free acid is the unneutralized amount, sometimes known as the active amount of an acid in a product formula. When the pH of product is set to the pKa of an acid, it means that the acid is optimized to penetrate and I guess like work best or maybe most efficiently on the skin. This is necessary information for a formulator and why knowing the percentage of an acid doesn't necessarily describe its strength in a practical way. To kind of re-summarize all of this, the pKa is a measure of an acid strength at a certain pH level, and the resulting free acid is what we would typically consider to be like the active amount in a product. That means that every product will have a certain amount of inactive acid, 
but I'll talk more about this later because that doesn't mean the inactive part is useless, it just means it's maybe not directly having an impact. Now I think the kind of acid scholar for all of this is of course Lab Muffin. She's actually written a whole post about free acid and even has a free acid calculator on her website. So if you want to explore this and kind of compare your own products then it's a good resource to use. I would consider this more informational just to give you an idea of how some products might perform versus others that you might have and why some products maybe feel gentler than others. You still need to use a skincare product in order to get a good gauge as to what the actual effect will be. Because all assets have different pKa numbers, Lab Muffin has already populated this information in the calculator. You just need to know the acid percentage, the product pH, and also the type of acid to select. Brands will sometimes intentionally reduce the amount of free acid in a product, so this is not a video dissing neutralized or unneutralized acids and what is better or not. Formulators will design a product or choose the pH appropriate to the acid very intentionally. So sometimes the goal is to create a more gentle feeling product that maybe you can use daily because you're not risking over exfoliation. What this all comes back to is just that knowing percentage alone doesn't inform or like influence the way a product should be used. I see a lot of people talking about how acid should never be used daily but if you have an acid that's been neutralized to a higher degree where maybe the pH is on the high end you can definitely use that daily. You're not going to be like directly exfoliating your skin to the point where you're damaging your skin barrier. Whereas conversely, if an acid does have a high amount of unneutralized acid or free acid in it, then that's going to be more harsh feeling on the skin. So yeah. Free acid is also just one part of the conversation around a product formula. There are lots of other factors that can influence how an acid might feel on the skin. The solvent, like what brands might use to mix an acid into a formula, and even just like things like the delivery system that's being implemented will influence how an acid penetrates and feels on the skin. More simple things even like how often an acid is used and how much of the product is used will also change the user experience. There are a wide range of penetration enhancers that are used by formulators. These include things like glycols, alcohol, surfactants, and even oils. So all of these things can influence how an acid feels, performs, permeates through the skin. I'll just throw up a screenshot from Lab Muffin's website and I think it's a great article and I highly, highly recommend that you read it if acid is the topic of interest for you. And I've also linked it below for full context. From what I understand, it's not like this blanket rule that the neutralized or inactive form of the acid has like zero exfoliating effect on the skin. It maybe just appears to be reduced, um, but even at this point, a lot of acids take on other skincare benefits like relating to moisturization as an example. Lab Muffin also discusses a concept called the depot effect. Depot, depot. Depot. <laughs> From what I understand, the depot effect is basically where the neutralized portion of an acid kind of has like a reservoir effect in the skin and ends up having like a slow release effect over time. So even though I was saying earlier that, you know, something like Pixie has 0.88% active acid when applied, the rest of that available percentage, like the four point something percent that's left over, will still kind of permeate in the skin. I just haven't been able to find anything about actually how directly exfoliating that is after it's been in the reservoir. <laughs> oh my god, you can tell I'm not a scientist because this is all very much like surface level explanation. I think it probably stands to reason that the higher just overall percentage of an acid there is in a formula, in a formula probably means there will be more more of a reservoir effect, so the likelihood of having that sustained release of the inactive acid is probably going to be greater than if it's just a small percentage to start with. At least that makes sense to me. And to repeat, I'm not a scientist, so there's a lot of ifs, buts, maybes around this topic. I just think sometimes the, these sort of skincare rules are communicated in such a simplistic way where every product is treated with the same recommendation and I just don't agree with that at all. So if you take away anything from this video, it's just to let go of sort of general recommendations. You kind of need to treat every product in and of itself to get an understanding of how efficiently it will work out. This is also why like the whole concept of skin cycling doesn't really make sense to me. You can't simply say use an acid every third day, like what acid, what type, how much free acid, how, you know, all this stuff, they're actually questions. People shouldn't really cycle anything just because they're told to follow a certain criteria. 
skincare products are not designed that way. They're not all designed the same. Brands make certain decisions. Formulators make certain decisions for a certain outcome that you simply can't predict by like reading an inkey list or reading a percentage. The truth is many skincare products, many acids, especially by a lot of the volume brands and department store brands, they will intentionally be neutralized so that people don't burn their face off. Like they want customers to use their products regularly, to use them gently, slow and steady wins the race and all that stuff. As part of being in the skincare community, we've probably embraced more high strength products more easily. But the average person does not want like a 10% acid at 100% strength on their face every day. Like that's a lot of intensity that's not needed. Conversely, there are a lot of acids that are designed to be more directly effective on the skin and have a proper and deeper exfoliating effect. As you'll know if you followed me for a while, I'm a big fan of Lotion P50 and that product is definitely designed to exfoliate. So it all just depends on what you're looking for, how quickly you want to get there, what your actual skin type needs, how your skincare concerns will react to certain acids. Somebody with rosacea will probably be able to get away with using an acid with a high neutralized content because they're able to integrate it regularly but slowly. There's so much nuance around this topic. It's that it's just not helpful to discuss these things in the very simplistic ways. Context always matters. On a personal note, I have found products that have like a higher free acid component to be more effective. Now that could be just because I'm noticing their effects more quickly and had I used something with less free acid for longer, I could be achieving similar results. But it's in my personality to be a little bit more impatient. So when I'm using an acid, I kind of want it to happen relatively quickly and that's where I think having that pKa pH relationship matters um, but if you're more of a general skincare user and you just want things like working in the background where you don't necessarily have like a lot of clogged pores or need direct exfoliating then there's room for everything there's room for acids that are more gentle room for acids that are stronger that's why we have such a wide range of brands and products it's to cater to everybody not every product is going to be right for everyone I think lactic acid is a good example. I've definitely used a few of them over the last couple years that have been neutralized to a point where the products are definitely trying to highlight more of the moisturizing effect of lactic. While in the background over time, you are getting a slow sort of slow exfoliating effect as well. So again, this is all done intentionally by design, by the formulator and by the brand, depending on what they're trying to achieve and who they're trying to reach. So to kind of summarize all this again, if you've tried two different products with the same acid percentage, but felt like they performed differently, this would explain why. And sometimes you might've even used a product with a weaker acid percentage versus a product with a fairly high acid percentage, but you found maybe the weaker product to be more directly effective. I probably babbled a little bit too much in this video and I don't know if it's all made sense. I hope I haven't sounded confusing. Please do let me know if you have any questions. I'll do my best to sort of clarify or, or explain things that haven't been clear. Thanks for hanging out with me and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.